Have you ever been in a discussion with someone who is hurling objections at you, but who clearly isn't interested in your responses, and you know he's not interested in your responses, because every time you start to answer one of his criticisms, he cuts you off and brings up a different criticism? Have you ever been told that the world's greatest scholars disagree with your view, and that you're therefore completely out of touch with modern scholarship? Have you ever been asked to share what you believe about some sensitive moral issue knowing that the person who asked you to share your beliefs was simply trying to trap you and point a finger at you and call you a bigot? Have you ever felt backed into a corner in a conversation? Have you ever felt completely outmatched and outgunned? Have you ever felt woefully unprepared? Have you ever lost your temper? Well, what if I told you that there's a book that can help you successfully navigate all of these situations, remain in the driver's seat the entire time, take the conversation where you want it to go, and make the other person do all of the difficult work. Do you think you might be interested? One of the most common questions I get is, David, what books should I read to get started in apologetics? And when someone asks me that question, I say, there's one book you have to read, regardless of what area of apologetics you're interested in, because it's foundational in all areas. Apart from that, my recommended reading list will depend on what issues you plan to focus on and where you're planning to use apologetics. In other words, a reading list for someone who wants to have discussions with Muslims is going to be different from a reading list for someone who wants to have discussions with atheists. And someone who wants to do street apologetics might need different books than someone who wants to do apologetics in a formal academic setting. But again, there's one book that will be on all apologetics reading lists because it's going to help you whether you want to talk to atheists or Muslims or cultists or anyone else and it's going to come in just as handy in all settings, the street, school, work, whatever. Now, you don't see me endorse many books, and you've never heard me say anything remotely like, this is the one apologetics book every Christian needs to read. So I don't say this lightly. Those of you who have already read it know which book I'm referring to. I'm referring to Greg Kokel's Tactics. Tactics is a modern classic, but I wanted to post this video because there's a new 10th anniversary edition with about 40% new material. So even if you've read the original Tactics, you might want to get the new edition. I first heard of Greg Kokel back in 2005 when I was over at Mike Lacona's house with some friends watching a televised debate between Greg and New Age guru Deepak Chopra. I think Nabil was there. That debate was one of the most epic massacres in the history of debate. Greg obliterated Chopra using the same techniques that he eventually explained in Tactics. Greg has several chapters explaining how to use what he calls the Columbo tactic, named after Detective Columbo from the old TV series. Detective Columbo always came across as a bumbling idiot, but he wasn't, and he would eventually get to the truth by relentlessly asking questions. The Columbo tactic involves lots of questions, asking questions to gather information, asking questions to reverse the burden of proof, and even asking questions to make a point. Greg gives tons of examples of how to use the Columbo tactic in different situations. I'll give a simple example that doesn't come from the book. I was talking to Greg one day, and I told him that one of the most common questions Muslims ask is, where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me, in those words? Muslims have been trained to ask this by people like Ahmed Didat and Zakir Knight. I have an entire video responding to that question, but Christians often make the mistake of immediately offering some of the classic proofs of the deity of Christ. And if you've tried that, you know that the Muslim is going to keep saying, no, I asked where he said, I am God, worship me. Where does he say those words? Greg's response was a bit different from mine. He said that the first thing he would do is ask for clarification. He said he would ask the Muslim, is that the only way someone can claim to be God? Notice, this already puts the Muslim in an awkward position. 
If he says yes, that's the only way a person can claim to be God. It's pretty easy to follow up with more questions that refute this. You could say, so you're telling me that if someone said, "I am the omnipotent, omniscient creator of the universe," he wouldn't be claiming to be God. So the Muslim can't say yes. But as soon as he admits that there are other ways for someone to claim to be God, you can start asking him to help you go through some of the various ways a person could claim to be God. This takes all the steam out of his original question, and it sets the stage for showing that Jesus claimed to be God in a number of different ways. You do all of this by asking some simple questions. If an atheist asks Greg, "What about all the evil in the world?" Greg is going to ask the atheist, "What do you mean by evil?" Then he's going to continue asking questions until it's ultimately revealed that the concept of evil makes no sense on the atheist's worldview, but that it does make sense on the theist's worldview. If someone says abortion is okay because a fetus is a human but not a person, Greg is going to ask. Can you explain the difference between the two? If someone claims that science proves that there's no god, Greg is going to ask how science does this. And what usually happens is that people find out very quickly that they're tossing around objections that they haven't really thought through. You'll also use Columbo to reverse the burden of proof. You do this by asking a question like, "How did you come to that conclusion?" Here you're asking a person to give his reasons for something that he just said. It's all too common for people to make a claim about Christianity or some moral issue without offering any evidence for it, and then expect you to refute them. A Muslim or an atheist might say the Bible's been corrupted, and then sit back and expect you to try to refute them. But they're the ones who made the claim, so they're the ones who have the burden of proof. If someone says that the Bible has been corrupted, it's good to start by asking for clarification. What do you mean by corruption? When do you think it was corrupted? Who corrupted it? Why did they corrupt it? How much of it was corrupted? Can we trust any of it? But then you'll want to put the burden of proof where it belongs, namely on the person who made the claim. You can ask, "What evidence convinced you that the Bible has been corrupted in the way you say it's been corrupted?" Now the burden of proof is on the atheist or the Muslim to defend his claim, not on you to refute it. These are some of the uses of Columbo. Greg does a much better job breaking it down and offering examples than I'm doing here. But you get the basic idea. He then goes on to present other tactics for all kinds of situations. He gives them cute names like steamroller, road scholar, sibling rivalry, infanticide, taking the roof off, just the facts, ma'am, and so on. You'll have to read the book if you want to understand the tactics. But if you learn them and practice them, you will find that they make it much easier to deal with objections and to get people to see. The weaknesses in their own positions. The new edition currently has 100% five-star reviews. Let's look at a few of the short reviews. This is the book I have recommended most to friends and fellow Christians over the years. It is also the first book I give to someone who is interested in thinking more clearly about their convictions and discussing them with others. And now the classic is even better. Ten years ago, I realized tactics was the best book written on how to talk intelligently about truth and your faith. Now it's even better. Tons of new material and insights. I just finished reading the new edition and took several pages of notes. No wonder this is the best-selling book each summer at Summit Ministries. An absolute must-have book for all Christians. The tactics Greg teaches will empower you in conversations and debates. Easy read. I could not wait to get my hands on this updated version of tactics. Greg Kokel is one of the best teachers in our era, and this book is simply incredible. It is very well written, practical, and should be on the shelf of every Christian who desires to get better at having intellectual spiritual conversations. Five stars, highly recommended. Fantastic book. This book literally changed my life. For the first time in years, I've been able to speak to people that disagree with me on any topic and not feel pressured to have every answer to every problem memorized. I can simply ask questions and stay in the driver's seat. 
As a thoughtful person that engages with family, friends, colleagues, etc., I was in need of something I could use to help people think more clearly about what they believe. I would recommend this book to everyone that wants to have more meaningful dialogue with those around them. How is it possible to make a must-have book even better? Greg Kokel has done it here. This updated version should be in the library of any Christian apologist, evangelist, or believer that wants to equip themselves to have meaningful conversations about their faith. The point here is not to win the argument, rather it is to engage with unbelievers in a way that gets them to examine their own presuppositions and how they match up with the compelling reasons for faith in Jesus Christ. You will not only be encouraged in your own faith, but will be more confident in sharing it with others. Highly recommend it. I would say that if Christians learn these tactics, it would solve a couple of major problems in apologetics and evangelism. One, Christians are usually on the defensive in conversations about worldviews. Other people are attacking Christianity without their own views and their own claims really being part of the discussion. Greg's book fixes that. If there's a weakness in the other person's position, and there always is, tactics will help bring it to the surface. Two, lots of Christians don't want to get into discussions with atheists or Muslims because they're worried about what they don't know. They're worried that the atheist or the Muslim is going to bring up all kinds of objections that they won't be able to deal with. But guess what? If you learn to ask the right questions, the other person is going to help you get where you want to go, even if you didn't know anything about his position. So, if you're going to read one apologetics book in 2020, make sure you read this one. The new edition contains more information and more examples than the original, so it's better to read the new edition. But if you know that you're more likely to read a shorter book, Use your best judgment on which edition to get. They're both phenomenal. Order a copy now. Make reading the book and practicing the tactics a New Year's resolution for 2020. The links to both editions are in the description box. If you've already read tactics, share your thoughts about it in the comments section. If you haven't, be sure to come back after you read it and let me know what you think.